Look at these folks. Have you have you all ever been in one room together before? Uh, Another yeah. town meeting first. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Celebrities, who's had them on? Oh, uh, we've all, we've all okay. Yeah. The worst one you've had on recently, Christopher Guest. One of our, yeah, he's great. He's I so like funny, the man. and he was he totally was bombed. Very boring. <laughs> very drunk. Was very he boring. like imbibed? No, he was just no, very no, drunk. No, no, we were drunk. He bombed. He, oh, he yeah. wasn't bombed. He bombed. <laughs> we were stellar. He bombed. <laughs> <laughs> and then we also had Billy Idol on years ago oh. uh, when we worked at KISW and. Um, we made entertainment tonight for that one. Yeah. Billy used every four-letter word invented. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and Mike Was this kept, before the delay No, no, time? Mike kept saying, uh, but in England, that means bird. Ah. And he'd go, no, it doesn't mean it. It means... <laughs> <laughs> who have you, who have you ever talked to that was just like the biggest disappointment or the biggest geek? Mm, Rich Hall, the comedian, was just oh. really, really not a nice man at why, all. And he why, would, why? Um, some of our, our sales staff would come up, and this, of course, is, is in Kansas City. They would come up and talk to him. He'd say, did you get permission to speak with me? Ooh. Ooh. So, so we hustled yes, right Yes, I did, and you know what I was told to say. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. No. How about you guys? Uh, this is this is sad me. I grew up with the Brady Bunch. Oh. Okay. That said, Marsha me, too. Brady, Marsha. <laughs> no, no. So the Brady Bunch to you is like what you are to Dana. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Very good. Yeah. Very good, Ken. Woohoo! Alan, Alan, Alan. Okay. Yeah. We had Brady one Bunch. of the uh, ladies on. She didn't want to acknowledge her past had anything to do with the Eve Brady Bunch. Bunch. Eve Plum, oh, that was it. Jam. Yeah, jam yeah like she's oh. got a lot going on now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's like, don't ask me anything about yeah, the Brady Bunch. Weather writes a note to us, don't call her Jan. She hates that. So, of course, we immediately call her Jan. <laughs> <laughs> Michael did Bolton. did that same interview. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Same thing. Yeah. We call Michael Jan. Bolton? Michael oh, yeah. Bolton, first oh. time he came, was a great guy. Second time he came, he was a jerk. Like a jerk being what? Wouldn't yep. talk to us, arrogant. real snotty, real arrogant. Uh, another guy we made mad was JFK Jr. Leonard got his hotel room number when he was in town mm -hmm. recently. Mm -hmm. We called him, talked to him on the air. He was more mad that we woke him up at 6 in the morning mm -hmm. than he was mad that... <laughs> nice school. Did you wear wedding dress or something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Dana? laughs> the interview I had with him. Oh! We need a rim shot in there for some of this stuff. You know what? She's got us three to one on slams. <laughs> so bitter. What about you guys? We have uh, bands play in my garage. Started with Blue Oyster Cult. They were doing a record thing in the air. We invited them over. They play in the garage. We record them, and then we put them on the air. And Foghat came out to my house to play in the garage. <laughs> Generally, they're bands that are either on their way up or, you know, in the twilight of their huge careers. <laughs> Foghead pulled up into my neighborhood with this huge tour bus, like <laughs> 75 feet long. They insisted that they needed to play with the garage door open because it was too hot, and it was blasting through the neighborhood. <laughs> and uh, I was really worried we were going to get in trouble, neighbors were going to come in. A bunch of my neighbors marching down the street, and I thought, I'm in big trouble. The guys at Foghat were, you know, they insisted on this. They come marching down with their Foghead albums to get them out of the Turned into a block party? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wonder how come there ain't no uh, minority morning host? Hmm? I don't see any out here. Good point. They're Bring your resume. Funny. That's a little funny. <laughs> they're not funny people. <laughs> 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 oh, no, I, and I, 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 wait a minute. That once was, again, that once again, <laughs> when, as you sit down to write your letter now, don't <laughs> send it here. <laughs> He has a legitimate question, though. I mean, I, and you know what? Well, There's I mean, a point to it. That's in any occupation. I mean, it's not. It's more visual in ours because we're in the public eye. But you look at the Mariner front office or any other major or corporation. I mean, if you go to Microsoft, minorities are obviously missing from the core of management, and, and it's just. I don't think there's any reason for it here. I, I think anybody talented can get a job here in Seattle. I don't think there's a, I don't think there's a lot of that sort of uh, feeling in this town. I just don't get it. People, like I said earlier, I think people here are kinder. Well, but you know, we have a fairly diverse community here. And it, it, one would expect that that would be represented on the airwaves. Mm -hmm. Well, let's let it start on Bob's show. What do you think? <laughs> get him out of there. Come on I down. may have an old Come on down. <laughs> You're the man. You know, there's nothing more frustrating than calling a radio station and requesting a song and it doesn't get on. Uh -huh. My children and I listen to KISS 106.1, uh -huh. 
And when we request a song, it's on right away. We, we never have to wait more than maybe 10 minutes. It comes on, it's a song we want. Uh, I my kids love time, Dana. I think it's about time someone told the truth about this. <laughs> a radio station has four, six, eight, 10, 12, 20 lines. Taken answering calls, you might get 60, 80, 100 calls an hour, and you might be able to play 10 or 12 songs. Um, the, the value in hearing what you want to hear is that all of that is compiled and it helps people know when songs are working and when they're really popular and also when they're not. And, but I, I mean, I don't know, do any of Thanks for ruining it. What we do, and I think a lot of stations are doing this now, is we'll tell you, nine times out of 10, the call us for something we play in a regular rotation. So what we've taken to doing is telling, if you call us, you say, I want to hear Possession by Sarah McLaughlin, I want to hear Mbop by Hanson, we'll tell you, okay, we played it an hour and a half ago, it'll be coming up, in two hours at this time. So that's what we've begun to do at our station, mm -hmm. just to be honest with listeners and say, not just say, we'll and, get it right on for and, you. And, and the idea that you may have them hanging for two hours doesn't no. hurt things either. That's okay too, yeah. but at least, or they'll go away and come back. <laughs> either way. <laughs> Can I give you a hint? Do you guys get a lot of requests for Irish music on the, oh, all the yeah, time? Yeah. Kind of I can't stand it anymore. That's why we have them in the tutu. <laughs> As a hint, you might want to try, we, we like to put people in the air a lot. We're very phone driven. And the more vivacious you sound, the more it sounds like we, we want to, you're going to be good and sound good on the air. If you can sound, request your song and with a lot of, oh, here, like this. You, you wanted Irish music, this is what you're going to get. You got them. That's for Irish dancer. Then you'll get your song on. Woo! You're supposed to have your hands down by your side, Dick. Oh, well. You know, it kind of reminds me of Vince Gill in disguise. <laughs> like real, real good disguise. You can see the hair through his tights, though. It's just... No, no. Those are varicose veins. Oh. Oh.